We, um, we do have now some of the sound, as I told you, we're not, and the audience, we're not carrying his remarks live because, frankly, he says a lot of things uh, that are not true and sometimes potentially dangerous. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but we do have some, uh, a small portion, so you can get a sense of his state of mind and how he might be framing his defense. I want to get your reaction to it. Let's, we're going to start, of course, I just want to note, he begins this, uh, this clip we're about to show you by making unfounded claims about the charges against him, untrue and unfounded claims about the charges against him, and the people he thinks are behind it. So I just want to preface it by saying that, and, and then at the end of the clip, you're going to hear him frame what could actually be part of his defense. So here's a little clip. Today we witness the most evil and heinous abuse of power in the history of our country. Very sad thing to watch. A corrupt sitting president had his top political opponent arrested on fake and fabricated charges of which he and numerous other presidents would be guilty. Right in the middle of a presidential election in which he is losing very badly. This is called election interference and yet another attempt to rig and steal a presidential election. More importantly, it's a political persecution like something straight out of a fascist or a communist nation. This day will go down in infamy and Joe Biden will forever be remembered as not only the most corrupt president in the history of our country, but perhaps even more importantly, the president who together with a band of his closest thugs, misfits and Marxists tried to destroy American democracy. But they will fail and we will win bigger and better than ever before. The Espionage Act has been used to go after traitors and spies. It has nothing to do with a former president legally keeping his own documents. As president, the law that applies to this case is not the Espionage Act, but very simply the Presidential Records Act, which is not even mentioned in this ridiculous 44-page indictment. Under the Presidential Records Act, which is civil, not criminal, I had every right to have these documents. Okay, a lot to unpack there. I'm, I'm not going to make you fact check, uh, but just quickly, uh, the, the Presidential Records Act, that's the defense he's going to bring, that's fine. Uh, there is no evidence that he legally kept these documents. They're not his documents. They belong to the American people. There's no evidence that, Donald, that Joe Biden had anything to do with uh, this charges brought by the special counsel. Uh, the charges are not fake. The charges are not fabricated. Uh, he's not losing an election. The election hasn't started, and he hasn't even gotten the presidential nomination. This, there's no evidence that this is election interference. We do not live in a fascist state. And in terms of trying to destroy American democracy, we all know who tried to actually undo, undo an election, and it's not Joe Biden, it's Mr. Trump. That said, your response. You know, I think... Uh Donald Trump is the king of saying one thing to his supporters and doing another, doing the opposite in private. And in this circumstance, one of just the most brightest examples of that is of him to today coming before his supporters and telling them, I was totally above board. I know that I was above board. This was part of the Presidential Records Act. But what we see in this indictment is a recording and, and also testimony of people tell of him telling people close to him, I could have declassified this. I did not declassify this. You shouldn't look at this right. because it is not allowed, because this is still a secret document. So this is just Trump in true form, in where he says one thing to his supporters, says another thing privately, but then also insinuates that he is a victim of a system that has been developed purely for his own privilege and benefit. Do you think that, I mean, we, we've heard some clips from Republicans on the Hill. Uh, Congressman Don Bacon, mm -hmm. uh, a veteran a Republican uh, from Nebraska. Now, he's in a swing district, but he's been very critical. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Chris Christie has been critical. Bill Barr has been critical. Asa Hutchinson, who's running against him, has been critical. Nikki Haley made comments if my, you know, these, her husband's deploying, mm -hmm. uh, if this kind of thing could get my, could put my husband's life at risk. Do you see any break in the fever? I mean, have you heard from any Republicans on Capitol Hill 
not just the Mike Lawlers of the world who are already like Trump skeptics, but mm -hmm. that's a congressman from New York for people who don't know. I know you know, <laughs> um, but a uh, Republican. But I mean, from other Republicans. Are people just sick of this already? You know, I do think that what is happening now is also layered into a bubbling political tension in what is happening in the House. Right now, some of the House's most staunch extremists, who are also some of Trump's most loyalist members of, of the House, have also ground uh, legislating to a halt. And it, there seem, it seems to have been made very clear, and they have sent a direct message to Speaker McCarthy, that McCarthy is either going to follow their orders or they're going to shut this whole place down. And that I think has created an enormous schism that is starting to happen within House Republicans, and this will absolutely exacerbate it, because what is detailed in this indictment is completely indefensible on top of, of a conviction around rape charges that just happened out of the state of New York, and we don't even know what's happening in Georgia yet. This level of misconduct of criminality is getting to a point where it is indefensible. And, um, and I do believe that we are approaching that point. Uh, you talked about the E. Jean Carroll uh, rape charges. It's a, civil, it's a civil case. He was found liable uh, for sexual abuse. And I think he had to pay $5 million, mm -hmm. something along those lines. A judge just ruled that E. Jean Carroll could add to her complaint against him because he went after her and defamed her at that Trump town hall, Absolutely. Uh, calling her a whack job. What, what do you think of that? Well, I, I mean, it also continues to convey his commitment to intimidation and to political intimidation, use of his platform towards intimidation. And to think that that would stop simply at one of his sexual assault victims is very naive. What we're seeing here, as outlined in this indictment and in these documents, right now, one of the things that we had to hear out of this court was that he could not contact his body person um, throughout this process because we have seen a pattern that, that suggests a tendency towards obstruction of justice. I don't think he can talk. He's, not, he's allowed to talk to him. He's not allowed to talk to him about the case. Right, right. Yeah. Correct, correct. So um, one of the House Republicans, uh, Andy Biggs, he uh, is calling this a war phase. Mm -hmm. He's a very, obviously, a Trump loyalist. Republican Senator J.D. Vance, another Trump loyalist, um, is, has announced that he's going to hold all nominees to the Department of Justice. He's going to block them. Like, mm -hmm. no votes will be allowed uh, on them, he says, indefinitely because of this indictment. Um, how, I mean, is Washington just going to shut down, do you think, ultimately? Well, because you described the schism uh, already occurring that's mm -hmm. stopping the House from doing its business. Well, I, I do think that that is a real question that cuts at the core of the, a decision that the Republican Party is going to have to make. If they are going to try to survive as a political party in the United States, we just saw that they experienced much lower gains than they thought they would. Um, last year in the 2022 midterm elections. We are also seeing the ramifications of an extreme Supreme Court that has several members that were appointed by President Trump. And uh, additionally, with the erosion of the legitimacy of the court with the conduct of Clarence Thomas, Brett Kavanaugh, and others, the Republican Party is very much at a crossroads right now. And they are going to have to decide if they are going to choose a cult of personality for this country. And that is what cuts at the core of this case. And I believe the American people are also going to have to decide if this is something that we are going to accept. And um, right now, you know, what is very dangerous is that Donald Trump is going to have this case going before a judge that, he, that was appointed during his administration. If, if he somehow is able to delay this, if he is somehow or for whatever reason is able to clinch the nomination, he will seek revenge. Uh, I, I believe that. And You're not the only one. I mean, Chris Christie said he thinks the entire, if Trump gets elected president again, his entire second term will be about revenge. I, I believe so. And what we saw during his first, uh, during his first term 
was, was him putting undue influence on, on the FBI, on the Department of Justice, to engage in, in an agenda of political, uh, in a politically motivated agenda. We will see this really cut to the core of our democracy if it is not checked right now. Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Democrat of New York, uh, good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it.